Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome to Sir Majesty's Easy World Science Channel. My name is Akajugo. Uh, today we'll be taking a brief look at projectile motion, taking a look at a few formulas and a few um, examples from past WIAC questions. So first off, let's recall some important kinematic equations. So these are equations where acceleration is constant. They are normally used to um, derive the formulas for projectile motion, but we won't be going through all the derivations today, maybe just one or two. Okay, so as we go on, we need to know that S is equal to displacement or distance in meters. V will represent the final velocity. U will be the initial velocity. T is time taken in seconds. A is acceleration. S oh, is acceleration. And of course, we are working in SI units except you know where stated so the first equation is s equals half of v plus u multiplied by t so the distance is equal to half of the average velocity multiplied by time second equation that's worth noting is v equals u plus the product of a and t so the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time the third equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2 multiplied by acceleration multiplied by the distance or displacement and the fourth one s equals ut plus half at squared where s is the distance ut product of initial velocity times time plus half of the product of acceleration and times and times raised to the power 2 times squared Okay, so we can modify the last equation a little bit, and this will be useful in a specific projectile scenario, which we will take a brief look at later on. And so if we place S, that's the distance, as final distance minus initial distance, that's SF minus SI, and we rearrange to get SF as the subject of the formula, we get that SF is equal to SI plus ut plus half at squared. It's still the same thing as the fourth equation. We just simply uh, broke down s into final distance minus initial distance. OK, so moving on. So for the examples below, we will ignore a resistance. Yeah. So the first scenario is an object rolling off a certain height. In this case, we have the height labeled as h, the vertical height labeled as h. We have the ball at the top of the table or the top of the cliff and then we have the range which is the horizontal distance okay so what equations do we need to find the height and the range let's start off with the height so the height simply is half times gravity times time squared that's a half times gravity times time squared and i'll just show how this has gotten because, you know, I said we'll take a look at one or two of the derivations for these um, equations. So recall the uh, fourth equation, S equals ut plus half at squared. Okay, but well, now we're considering the height, and the height in this case is a vertical height. So let's replace each portion of the fourth equation with its vertical component. So S is replaced by h, the height. Uh, u is replaced by u in the y direction. T remains the same. Uh, acceleration is replaced by gravity, and T, of course, remains the same. I so know that at maximum height, the, the vertical component of velocity is equal to zero, and the acceleration in the y direction is the same as gravity, which is 9.8 times 9.8 meter per second squared. So if, by the time you simplify with u y equal to zero, you have that height is equal to half times gravity times times squared. So then how do you find the range? So this range is a horizontal distance. So this is much simpler. The range is the vertical component of the velocity multiplied by the time. Hi, I'll just tell you that you can contact Sir Majesty if you will for laboratory equipment and reagents. They are affordable and provide accurate results too. Sir Majesty's world only sells what he knows, and his patterns of delivery are sure and certain. Please see all that today. Thanks for your patronage.
using my prepared filler can also place order for any of these uh, apparatus and reagent to some majesty. Okay. So moving on to the second scenario. The key, I'm just going to list the key equations for this one for this scenario, but you won't be deriving these equations though. You might, you know, take a look at the first four kinematic equations I showed and you might try your hands at deriving these ones. Okay. And so let's look at the diagram below. So A represents the initial starting point, B represents the maximum height of the peak, and C represents the final point. U in this case represents the uh, velocity at which the ball or the object is projected and theta is the angle to the ground. Uh, so just briefly, at the maximum height, as we mentioned earlier, the velocity is equal to zero meter per second. And of course, the speed at A just is equal to the speed at C. Okay, so for the maximum height, we have with that, um, for the height is u squared sine squared theta divided by 2g. Of course, u squared is the initial velocity, and of course, theta is the angle of projection of the ball or the object. And g, of course, is um, gravity, 9.8 times 10, 9.8 meter per second squared. And so just in case you might be wondering, sine squared theta is also the same as sine theta all squared, which is represented on the right. So sine squared theta, same thing as sine theta all squared. Okay, so how do you find the range? So the range is another formula that looks similar to the formula for the um, for the height. So range is u squared sine 2 theta divided by g. In this case, the angle is what you have to multiply the angle by 2, not the entire um, sine function. So just the angle is being multiplied by 2. Okay, so moving on. How do you find the time it takes us to go from point A to point B? So looking again at the diagram, point A is the initial start point and point B is the maximum height. So what formula can we use to find the time it takes us to go from point A to point B? And so when simplified, you have that the time taken to go from point A to point B is equal to U, that's initial velocity, multiplied by sine theta divided by G. Okay, so what happens if we then want to find the time taken to go from point A to point C? Now, my diagram isn't exactly um, to scale, but the idea is that this is a symmetric graph. So the area from A to B is equal to B to C. So therefore, you'd expect that the time taken to travel from point A to point C is equal to two times the time taken to travel from point A to point B. And I will show this below. So there you go. The time taken to travel from point A to point C, that's from the beginning to the end, is simply uh, two multiplied by the equation above, two u sine theta divided by g. That's because the, this projectile motion is symmetrical. Okay, so let's move on to the third scenario. I'm not entirely sure how common this scenario is, but it is worth mentioning. So this time around, the object is at a certain height and it is then projected at an angle with a certain velocity. Okay. And so this is where I, where I mentioned earlier that we, we will need to use the modified form of the fourth equation that we mentioned earlier. Okay. And so we're looking for so SF, like I mentioned earlier, SF is equal to SI plus UT plus half AT squared. And we're going to try to look for the height of the cliff in this case. So height is the initial, the height in this case would represent the initial um, height of the ball. And SF would be the final height, which would be zero because the ball ran, lands on the ground. And so if you plug it in, you should have SF zero equals SI, which is the height, plus UT plus half AT squared. And then you can always um, solve for the height using the quadratic equation. 
okay and so if you don't remember the quadratic equation it is also listed here where x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a okay so these are the main these are the three major scenarios for projectile motion if you do find something else or something outside these three i've given the concept remains the same so you just need to apply the formulas that we've taken a look at to you know solve the questions okay so right now let's change gears a little bit and go through a few practice problems from previous um YAC past paper, previous YAC papers okay so this one is from physics uh, may june 2015 paper two and it states a body is projected at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal with a velocity of 150 meters per second calculate the time it takes to reach the greatest height and in this case gravity is specified for us as 10 meters 10 meters per second squared and we are told to neglect air resistance okay so the first thing is to of course draw your diagram as that will help you visualize what you're looking at and it'll help you um, you know think about what you need to solve so this is a rough sketch shown below so we have the initial projection uh, initial projection angle of 30 degrees and we have the velocity given to us as 150 meters per second I know that the question asks us to find the time it takes to reach the greatest height, not the time for the entire um, journey or entire path of the of the body. Okay, and so this is from scenario two. Let's take a look back at the equation. So the time needed to um, get to the maximum heights, as we stated earlier, is u sine theta divided by g. Okay, so u is the initial velocity, 150 meters per second sine theta the angle is 30 so sine 30 divided by 10. so that leaves us with 15 divided by 2 and in decimal form that is 7.5 seconds okay uh, moving on let's look at another question i am not sure what this where this year where this i'm not sure what year this problem was taken from but anyway it states a tennis ball traveling with a speed of 10 meters per second rolls off a horizontal table that is one meter high ignoring air resistance determine the horizontal speed of the ball just as it strikes the floor and two determine the time of the time of flight of the ball in the air and once again gravity is specified as 10 meters per second squared okay so this is scenario one but slightly modified because the ball has a horizontal velocity okay so once again, it helps to obviously draw the diagram as it shows you what you're looking at and what you need to solve. So this is a rough diagram of what we're given. We have the height, we have the um, horizontal component of velocity, which is given to us as 10 meters per second, and height is specified as one meter. So the question, first question states, what is the horizontal speed of the ball just as it strikes the floor? So the horizontal speed of the ball as it strikes the floor will be the same as a horizontal speed as it rolls off the table so this is because for the horizontal component we are told to ignore air resistance so it's safe to assume that the speed will not change and because gravity acts in the y direction it will not have any effect on the horizontal uh, velocity so therefore the horizontal speed is still the same speed as a roll of the table 10 meters per second okay so question b says determine the time of flight of the ball in the air and we're given the height okay so looking back at the equation height is equal to half times gt squared from scenario one so but we're looking for time this time around because we're given the height and gravity is specified and so if you solve for t t is equal to the square root of 2h divided by g and if you plug in the values you should have t square root of 2 times the height is 1 and gravity is given as 10. Plug that into your calculator and you should get 0 0.44721 and if you round that off to three significant figures 0 0.447 seconds. Moving on I think this is the last question that we will cover for this one. 
So this is from 2019, paper two. The diagram above illustrates a projectile motion. Identify each of the physical quantities labeled P, uh, I believe that's beta, H, and R. Then question B states, write an equation to show the relationship between P, G, R max, where G is acceleration due to gravity and R max is the maximum R. Okay, so let's start off with, let's start off. What does P, beta, H, and R, what do they all mean? So beta in this case, it's, um, it's in the diagram. Beta is the angle of projection, as we, took, as we saw earlier in scenario two. Um, R in this case is the range or the horizontal distance. H, as specified in the diagram, is the maximum height. And P is the initial uh, projection velocity. There's no value, so that's all, that's all the four quantities we're asked to identify. And so let's solve uh, part B. But there's something I forgot to mention earlier. So in this scenario too, whenever you're asked to find the maximum range, the angle of projection has to be 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is the um, angle of projection that will achieve the maximum range. So let's plug and chug from the equation and from a question from scenario two as earlier. So recall that the range is equal to u squared sine 2 theta divided by g. All right. I remember what we said. To achieve maximum range, um, the angle has to be 45 degrees. And so sine 2 theta is equal to sine 2 times 45. 2 times 45 is 90. And sine 90 is equal to 1. So we now have the maximum range as u squared divided by g. But that's not all. We have to simplify and use the terms specified by the question. The question doesn't give us, doesn't allow us to use u squared. So we need to um, rewrite our equation u squared over g in terms of what the question has given us. Okay. So the question gives us uh, p as the initial projection velocity. So we need to write u squared in terms of p. So u squared in terms of p is simply p squared. And of course, we're left with g as g. So we have a final equation as r max, uh, maximum range is equal to p squared divided by g. All right, I think that is all for this one. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, any comments, if you have any other topic you think we should take a look at, please let us know in the chat or the comment section. Thank you once again.